Pizzas, we need two big pizzas, man. Everything on them. Sports, conveyor ovens, and robots were all part of our first video about Little Caesars. So with more to explore, let's take a look at the top 10 untold truths of Little Caesars, part two. There's no rules! Put your shirt back on! There's one rule! Little Caesars is the name of the best arena in the NHL. Five rules up behind the penalty box. Who the man? Yeah, boy! That's right! Yeah. Mike Illich, the founder of Little Caesars, amassed one of the more impressive sports teams' portfolios, owning both the Detroit Tigers of Major League Baseball and the Detroit Red Wings of the National Hockey League. And it all started with a professional softball team. Part of that portfolio includes Little Caesars Arena in downtown Detroit. Construction to replace the legendary Joe Louis Arena started in April of 2015, and the arena opened in time for the 2017 season. Costing just under $900 million to build, the arena was immediately dubbed a masterpiece by sporting fans and the best arena in the NHL. It features a unique glass-roofed concourse that connects it to the headquarters for the Detroit Red Wings, as well as some shops for fans to check out before, during, or after games. Named the 2018 Sports Facility of the Year by Sports Business Awards, which makes sense considering that the arena's goal was to be something that was world-class that rivaled anything in the country, perhaps the world. Beyond that, there is an over $2 billion sports and entertainment district that covers more than 650,000 square feet around the arena that also include mixed-use neighborhoods in a retail residential mix that is part of the revival of downtown Detroit after decades of decay. It was also recently announced that the Detroit Pistons, another team that the elder Illich looked into buying, would be moving into the arena as well, meaning that the stadium would become the best home arena in two different sports leagues. Yankee Moon finally making a move, and it is worth the uh, wait! All day long. Woo! Legging part two so far? Go ahead and click that subscribe button and tap that bell to join our notification squad. Little Caesars used to be mushroom farmers, sort of. Mushrooms! Back in 1969, the world was a different place. The summer of love had occurred the year prior and had turned into a drug-induced nightmare, the Beatles were about a year away from breaking up, the Vietnam War was in full swing, and, most importantly, Little Caesars was opening its 50th location. Back then, and then again recently, quality, fresh ingredients were super important. Except no one ate kale or avocados that weren't guacamole. What? Because of that, Little Caesars decided to cut out the middleman, at least for one of their ingredients. And while you'd think they'd want to invest in a tomato or cheese farm because of their importance, they instead purchased some mushroom farms. Dubbed the Little Caesars Mushroom Farm, Inc., the goal was to, obviously, grow, package, and distribute mushrooms to all 50 Little Caesars locations. It actually worked out well, so they added more products and turned the business into Blue Line Food Service, and added more clients outside of Little Caesars. Blue Line Food Service still exists and has 14 U.S. locations and one in Canada, which explains how the Illich family was able to buy so many sports teams. Yo, Adrian! Adrian! Little Caesars has a mobile kitchen, just in case. Just in cases. A lot of companies attempt to give back to their communities, but not all communities are like Detroit, a once vibrant city built around the American car industry that has fallen on hard times these past few half centuries. So with that in mind, Little Caesars has attempted to give back in multiple ways, some of which we've already covered with the investments made in their new arena and the surrounding neighborhood retail centers. On a smaller scale though, they've also given back by providing food to those in need, and that's where their mobile love kitchen comes in. Started in 1985, the Mobile Love Kitchen has served more than 3 million people in need and has expanded from helping communities in and around Detroit to traveling around the country to areas where natural disasters have occurred to provide not only food to the needy, but delicious, melty food to the needy. Because of its success and the seemingly unending amount of natural disasters around the United States, they started a second Mobile Love Kitchen in order to, according to their website, be in service 365 days a year. The Mobile Love Kitchen has received many presidential awards over the years and is always a welcome sight in any community. Hey, Carl, good to see you. Illich paid Rosa Parks rent for 11 years. Oh, we paid our rent.
We paid our rent. So far, we've basically established what a great company Little Caesars is, which really was the doing of the founder, Mike Illich, who strongly believed in giving back to those in need or those who have given back themselves. No better example of this exists than the fact that Mike Illich paid the rent of Rosa Parks for 11 years. That's a decade. Something that didn't come to light until the elder Illich passed away in February of 2017. You see, Rosa Parks lived in Detroit, and because Detroit has had its issues, she was assaulted, beaten, and robbed while in her Detroit home back in 1994 when she was 81 years old. Because of that, a local judge named Damon Keith, who was the one that let people know what Illich had done, decided to find Parks a better place to live, and that's where Illich got involved. He called Keith and let him know that he'd pay for Rosa Parks' digs, and did so until she passed away in 2005. Considering he did this without telling anyone shows that he was a great man who did great things because he believed in them, not for publicity or a tax break. Because he's the hero Gotham deserves. Little Caesars Pizza Portal. I like pizza. I like it. One drawback for Little Caesars is that they don't deliver their pizza. To make up for that fact, they offer $5 pizzas that you can essentially pick up at any time. Although those pizzas are generally pretty standard and don't allow for a lot of flexibility, as they're cooked ahead of time, so people can pick up a cheese or pepperoni pizza right after walking in the door. To assist with allowing people more pizza freedom, Little Caesars has begun something called the Pizza Portal, which allows people to create the pizza of their dreams through an app and then drive to their nearest Little Caesars, enter the three-digit code given to them by the app, and then voila, a mushroom kale and sausage monstrosity in your hands in record time. With a goal of creating no line, no waiting, and really no human interaction, it's the perfect solution for one of the larger criticisms of Little Caesars, and of going outside for those of us who basically live online and consume high-calorie foods for every meal. While the program hasn't rolled out to every location yet, the testing has apparently gone well, and it should be implemented in the very near future, making pizza even more omnipresent. Pizza! We like pizza! Get out! Little Caesars Investment in Detroit how many abandoned buildings we have in Detroit. We've already established what a great guy Mike Illich was, and also that because of all those delicious pizzas we buy, they've been able to give back. Their investment in Detroit didn't start or end with Little Caesars Arena, though, and the sheer scale of their investment was reported in Crane's Business Detroit back in 2017. It was reported that the Olympia Development of Michigan organization, which is owned by the Illich family, had invested just under $1 billion in downtown Detroit, from the investments they made in Little Caesars Arena to the area 50 blocks around the stadium, which is essentially the entire downtown and surrounding areas. On top of that, 90% of that money went to companies from and in Michigan, meaning that they weren't only helping to rebuild Detroit literally, but also were putting money back into companies from the area. The district Detroit that surrounds Little Caesars Arena alone cost $1.2 billion, was done mostly by Michigan companies, and could be the spark that downtown Detroit needs to really return to its glory days. I am the gatekeeper of my own destiny. And I will have my glory day in the hot sun. Little Caesars was sued over halal pizza. Okay, well, you should sue McDonald's because they f***ed you up, all right? That's not to say that it's been all sunshine and profits for Little Caesars, or that everyone in Detroit is enamored with Little Caesars. In 2017, it was announced that they were sued by a Muslim man from nearby Dearborn, Michigan, which is one of the largest Muslim populations in the United States. Because of that, the Little Caesars in Dearborn began selling halal pizza, which is pizza that doesn't include any pork products, as eating pork is a big no-no for Muslims, and other religions as well. To be halal, pepperoni has to be made differently, as does Canadian bacon and bacon. The man man named Mohammed Bazi knew that the pepperoni was definitely pork. Bazi sued for 100 million in damages because he wanted to send a message in an envelope made of gold. I love gold! that eating pork is devastating for devout Muslims. Little Caesars looked into it and said that Bazi changed his order from halal pizza to their hot and ready pizza that isn't labeled as halal, and the judge agreed, dismissing the case. Case dismissed. Pizza Pizza used to mean free crazy bread? It's their crazy bread, you know, that's just going crazy, going wild. This is perhaps the biggest stretch on this list, but hey, we're about 20 unknown facts total between two lists, so give us some slack. Back in 2013, a user on Reddit claimed that there was a secret code you could use to get free crazy bread from Little Caesars. A user named Bamness said that he went into a Little Caesars that he had clearly frequented regularly and said, Pizza Pizza, after his order, repeating the slogan that was created as a one-off promotion for two pizzas for the price of one from any Little Caesars competitors if 
you brought a coupon or add-in showing the price of that pizza, meaning for one pizza elsewhere, you'd get two at Little Caesars. According to Bamness, while the person taking the order didn't budge, someone came out of the back and handed him free crazy bread as well as, and this is the important part, a thanks for being a longtime customer. So it just sounds like Bamness was being rewarded for being an enthusiastic and longtime customer and misunderstood what that meant, or was just looking to troll people on Reddit. But either way, it's almost a guarantee that multiple people went into Little Caesars, starving and low on cash, and yelled, pizza, pizza? before being asked to leave. That alone makes it worthy of this list. I barely made the cut. The Little Caesars logo has a hidden message. Uh, Homer? There's a hidden message to this song that you may have missed. The logo for Little Caesars has changed throughout the years, and every time there's a change, you can guarantee that a company spent a ton of time and money figuring out what to change and why to change it, hiring marketing companies to come up with competing ideas, and focus testing those ideas against groups that represent all sorts of different demographics. As a symbol for their business, there is no mistakes made, as every single pixel is poured over and considered. And thus, it's safe to say that there aren't many coincidences. Coincidence? I think not! With that in mind, take a look at the Little Caesars logo with the toga-wearing, pizza-eating mascot that is seared into your memory. At the bottom of his toga is a repeating design that sort of looks like parts of squares, and at first glance, that's all you see. But if you look again, it actually looks like the letters L and C repeating across the bottom of the toga. We'll let you figure out what L and C means, but this has some merit beyond our interpretation, as CBS Detroit also did a piece on this in what had to be the slowest news day of all time. <laughs> Slow news day. There were pizza wars in the early to mid 1990s. Little Caesars lost. You lose. Good day, sir. Forget the East Coast versus West Coast rap wars that occurred until the mid-1990s. The real nonsensical war that changed things forever was the pizza wars that occurred from really around 1983 through the mid-1990s. Before those wars, Little Caesars was actually the second largest pizza chain in the United States, behind Pizza Hut, who fired the first shots in what has been called the Pizza Wars in 83 by offering a free pizza if that pie wasn't delivered within 30 minutes. Forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for Pizza. While the war didn't include any actual violence or even any property damage or slashed tires on delivery drivers' cars, it did include things like direct mail bombardments, the stealing of ideas between chains, and a lot of passive-aggressive media statements and more. Just like how war can help lift a company out of a recession or even a depression, the pizza wars actually created a boon in the pizza industry as the chains poured tons of money into hiring more delivery drivers, opening more franchises, and selling more and more pizza. Unfortunately for Little Caesars, they ended up on the losing end of this war as they were displaced by Domino's, who catapulted them to become the number two chain in the game, behind Pizza Hut, the Pizza Hut of pizza chains. At least they're doing better than Papa John's. Yay! So go grab a slice with your left hand and click that subscribe button and tap that notification bell with your right. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out our other Little Caesars video or any of our other great videos. Good evening, sir. Would you like to hear our specials? No! Pizza!